This time on Rider Rat Video, we're talking high tops versus low tops, and we're talking about Skater of the Decade Awards. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel where you can learn new things about skateboarding. I talk about all kinds of skateboarding topics from biographies of your favorite pros on retro rippers. You can learn tricks on the shred school. You can learn about trick histories. You can learn all kinds of stuff in the skateboarding world and surrounding topics. But today I'm answering your questions on my series, Ask Rad Rat. If you have any questions brewing in your mind, go to radratvideo.com and you can submit your own question for the next video right there. Let's get into today's first one is from Fabricio who says, what are your thoughts on high top versus lows? Are high top really better for ankle support with less chances of, of rolling it? Are low top really better for flicking the board? Which one do you prefer? So this is something that I always have a lot of concern for because really bad ankles run in my family. My mom broke her ankles, you know, one or the other, I think four times. One time she was walking down the stairs to the basement of my friend's house and the last stair is like this much taller than the last one. Somehow she just misstepped in that extra hundredth of a second and just fractured her ankle. She broke it walking through a field one time. Like this is the kind of ankles that I've got inherited here. So I'm always really concerned about it. I did sprain mine really, really bad one time. Bad enough that the doctor said I should have broke it because I could have set it and it would have healed in place instead of just like slowly bending back into where it should be. I was out for like six months. So ankle support is something I'm always concerned about. But something I'm concerned about even higher than that is being poor. So I don't necessarily buy the shoes that I want. I buy the shoes that I have found on clearance or at garage sales. I just found some old skate shoes. Uh, I forget what kind. It was like Tony Hawk, whatever, from like 2003 or something at a garage sale. Like that's the kind of skate shoes I buy. So I don't have a ton of uh, preferences that I'll stick to. But I have tried highs and lows, and to me, I think it's a good trade-off. So of course there is a trade-off, because when you're doing tricks, flip tricks, you gotta flick your ankle, but if your ankle goes too far, it gets hurt. So the high tops slow down the flick a little bit, but they help it not roll as well. Um, all you can really do is try it and decide for yourself. For me, I do like them. I don't think it hurts too much um, for the flips because I do mostly tech. That's what I'm into. I'm always doing weird flip tricks and all kinds of stuff like that. And for me, unless I was doing like nothing but triple flips and all kinds of, you know, super fast, hard flicking stuff, I don't think it would have that much of an effect. If you're doing your standard tricks, you're doing kick flips, 360 flips, that kind of stuff, I think it'd be totally fine. But again, it's up to you to test it out and see um, if it's good for you. One thing that I would uh, mention, I can't recommend it because I haven't tried them or anything, but uh, Ronnie Krieger on his website, RonnieKrieger.com, he sells ankle stabilizers. And it's like a thing you wrap around your foot and then you can wear normal shoes. And so that way you can get the benefits of the high top and then just buy whatever other shoes you actually want. Again, like I said, I haven't tried them. I'm not endorsing them or anything like that, but it is something that's out there in case it is something that you are concerned about too. I may end up trying them in the future, but you know, you just have to give it a try. I don't think it's gonna ruin your skateboarding, so you don't have to worry about trying it. Um, just try some and uh, see if it works for you. Okay, next question for today is from Trevor Donigan, who says, I've played the Tony Hawk series my whole life. My favorite pro skater was always Pro Skater 3, but whenever I hear people talk about the games, I always hear that Pro Skater 2 was the best game ever. Pro Skater 3 was bigger than Pro Skater 2. More fun challenges, bigger and more fun uh, levels, secret characters, cheats, reverse, etc. Yet people always say how Pro Skater 2 was their favorite. Why is Pro Skater 2 considered the best Tony Hawk game if Pro Skater, Pro Skater 3 was a bigger and better game? Well, um, a lot of people do say that, but if you look up the scores, uh, two, Pro Skater 2 averaged like a 98, uh, Pro Skater 3 averaged a 97. So when the time as they came out, they were both lauded as some of the best games ever. Uh, you know, some of the best games that ever came out on the PS1 and PS2. So, you know, you're not going to get a lot of people saying that they suck or anything like that. And I definitely loved them both when they came out. But Pro Skater 2, to me, always felt a lot more classic. It was a lot tighter. Um, like, in Pro Skater 3, they're starting to add in some, uh, some next-gen, nice-to-have type of stuff. You know, like, characters will talk to you when you go by, like the, the photographers and that type of stuff. You'll have things that trigger cutscenes a lot more often. Um, 
stuff that just kind of slows you down a little bit, takes you out of the experience. Again, it's not bad, but when you play the game a thousand times, you're trying to beat it with every single character and all that kind of stuff. Pro Skater 2 to me has always just been so uh, arcade perfect. You know, the controls are super tight. You can beat a, a level, like you could speed run it a lot easier because there's less stuff that you're trying to deal with that's outside of the actual skateboarding. Um, I like the 360 flip in that game a lot more, which is a big deal because you do them all the time. Uh, that's a small thing, but it's one of the first things I always did in a new skateboarding game to see how well the 360 flip was animated. Love the one in Tony Hawk 2. The Tony Hawk 3 one just kind of like folds over itself in some weird way. Um, I don't know. Like it's, it's hard to say that Tony Hawk 3 is bad in any way. I'm not saying that. But to me, 2 is just so much more classic. It was such a big deal when it came out. Um, that I just can't deny how great it was. And the, the cheats, you know, with the moon physics and all that kind of stuff, the secrets of uh, stages you can unlock, like Skater's Heaven and uh, the Chopper Drop, and, like all this stuff was just so, so good um, that it's kind of untoppable. Even if Pro Skater 3 didn't have any problems at all and was just jaw-droppingly amazing, it'd be hard to beat Pro Skater 2 just for its place in history, right? So... Uh, right now, if you've never played any skateboarding games at all, you're 12 years old, and you have two and three in, in front of you, maybe you'd like three more, and that's perfectly fine. But uh, as someone who played them as they were new, who lived through all of it, um, I just can't put anything above two in my book. So that's just me. I'm not going to say you're wrong and argue with you or, or whatever, but uh, that's just my opinion on it. Okay, last question for today is from Weirdly Made, who talks about Skater of the Decade. He says, After watching your video on why Rodney never won Skater of the Year, it got me thinking about which skaters are considered the best of a decade. Which skaters would you select for Skater of the Decade? So I did the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s. The 2010s are not done yet. Um, plus, I don't follow brand new stuff quite as much as old stuff. So uh, maybe I'll revisit this at some point. But when we're talking about the 80s, we have to look at the long-lasting impact of the skater. So um, anything that happened that far back could have huge effects by now as we get into the future. So that's my criteria for picking who made the biggest impact of the 80s, who would be my skater of the decade in the 80s. And there are a few people that I would think about. First would be Tony Hawk. Obviously, he won a ton of contests. He invented a million tricks. He made skateboarding more popular. Uh, you know, he didn't really become as much of a spokesman until later, but um, he was just a huge name in skateboarding, did a lot of stuff. But the thing is, if you delete Tony Hawk from the 80s and he doesn't exist anymore, um, street skating would still exist. You know, um, his that vert stuff hasn't really left as much of an impact uh, when you get all the way into today. So it's hard to put Tony Hawk on that. Uh, to give him that award, even though he was huge in the 80s, did a lot of great stuff. Uh, I don't think I would pick him. The uh, next person I was thinking of is Gans. Obviously, he invented a ton of stuff. He was the first guy to do a lot of different things. He may sort of have been the first one to do a handrail. I have a video about that right here. Um, but he definitely did a lot of really interesting, really cool stuff. But I got to give it to Rodney Mullen. Uh, if I think about who you would pull out of skateboarding that would just destroy it, it would have to be him. Uh, he invented, you know, ollies, kickflips, 360 flips, all this kind of stuff that if we didn't have it, what would skateboarding be like right now? I'm sure something else would have happened. I don't think we'd still be doing bonuses and having backyard half pipes and that's it. I think someone else might have come up with something like in my video on who really invented the ollie because it probably wasn't uh, Gelfand. Uh, Rocco was doing frontside pop shove in like 79 or something. He was doing them over... I forget what it was, like a broom handle or something, but he was getting some airtime. I think eventually someone might have found another way to get up in the air, but still, um, without Mullen, I don't know what we would have right now. So to me, like the Gans is an amazing artist and his work is just incredible, but Rodney Mullen invented the pencil, you know? Uh, without what he gave us, who knows what else could have come after it. So I don't know, I definitely have to go with Mullen for the 80s. Um, just on the amount of impact that he had based on the stuff he did at that time. Now, as we get into the 90s, uh, that was a little bit tougher. There were a few people that came to mind. Uh, Kossin was a big one, of course. Uh, just the stuff that he did, taking stuff to the next level. 
um, with bigger rails and hubbas and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the style and everything, he was definitely one of the one of the greats uh, of the decade, but I don't think I would give it to him. I was thinking of uh, Chad Muska would have been huge as well. Um, you know, he pushed giant handrails and stuff to a much greater level than anyone else at the time, which is awesome and it's fun to watch. Um, I'm not so much worried about impact at this point because skateboarding has branched off in so many ways at this point, but um, Muska definitely did a lot of great stuff, but it, you don't really see a lot of Muska style uh, still around anymore. Um, I don't know. But the one that I decided to go with was Tom Penny. I have a video about his career right here. Uh, he was just so naturally good at skateboarding. He made everything look effortless and really clean and smooth and just so good. Uh, he was one of the most talented skateboarders ever born, I think. And uh, everything he did in the 90s was just amazing. If you don't know why I'm saying all this stuff, watch that video. I think uh, it'll blow your mind too, just to know in context all that stuff that he did. So I have to go with him uh, just on that basis. And then last is the 2000s. Uh, 2000 to 2010 or 2001 to 2010 or however you want to count it. Um, there were quite a few options here and this was a really, really tough one because there's a, so many skaters now. If you want to go back to the 80s, you have a couple of big choices. In the 2000s, there's a million guys who all did a lot, but no one that really, you know, invented anything new except for uh, Danny Way with the uh, mega ramp, I guess. Uh, he invented a new category of skateboarding. So that was a really huge thing. But the other people I was thinking of are uh, Daewon Song, who had a lot of really good parts in that time. Super technical stuff, really loved everything he did, and there's no doubt that he's one of the best skateboarders alive right now. He can just do anything he wants and it'll work. Um, so he's you know, an amazing skateboarder and he did a lot of great stuff. Um, but the guy that I really have to give it to is Mark Johnson. Um, he had so many good parts. He had two for tilt mode. Um, he had uh, hot chocolate. Yeah, right. I think he had a couple more. But this stuff was all really, really, really good. He's just amazing. I love to watch his skateboarding. And I think as anyone who did uh, the most, the biggest body of work in those 10 years that I would still love to watch today, it would probably be him. This one, like I said, is a really tough call. I could go with any of those three that I mentioned and probably 10 more, you could all argue equally. But if I had to pick one, that would be him. Although I'd like to see your suggestions below. So those are the questions for now. Uh, if you have any more for me next time, go to radratvideo.com and submit a question right on the homepage. There's a little box to do that. But until then, make sure you subscribe and watch some of these other videos uh, in the meantime. Thanks for watching.